In quilting and in art in general, color gets all the credit while value does the heavy lifting. Hi, I'm Amy and I make things. And in today's video, I'm making some valuable points about value. Hang around, let's see what happens. Welcome to Breakdown Quilt Along Week 4. The non-name kind of grew on me. Layout and assembly. It's time to get your pieces laid out and assembled, and this quilt is especially fun in this step because you get to play. Because I rarely make a quilt in the fabric or color scheme that it calls for, I break down layout in two steps. Number one, structure, and number two, arrangement. The structure of the quilt is the grid or format of how the blocks are laid out. 4x5, 9x11, block A, block B, block C, what have you. And I get this framework in place first as a sort of a rough draft. I don't worry about color or value, I just lay out the structure. In the case of remixed geese, it was especially challenging and fun. And as Anna and Toby went through the layout, it sounded like Nintendo cheat codes. Horizontal, up, up, vertical, left, right, vertical, down, down. It was rather entertaining, but really helpful to have two people working on it. I just supervised. Arrangement, like I say, I rarely make a quilt according to pattern, so I spend a great deal of time in step two, moving and balancing both color and value so that the quilt has flow and balance and no glaring areas of one color or dark corners, unless I want them there. Let me show you. Here is the quilt after the structure layout, and I notice a few light areas and some color groupings that I want to move around. Here's what it looks like through a red value lens. That's different, right? You can see why it feels heavy in the lower right corner, even though the colors are bright and varied. And this is not a fancy camera tool. It's this, the Ruby Square Ruler. It's made by Wisecraft Studios, wisecrafthandmade.com. I think I got mine from Missouri Star when she was featured. I'll link several sources in the description box. It's a simple tool and it works really well to separate lightness and darkness of a fabric from the color, which is hard for our brains to do. There is the trick of taking a photo with your phone and flipping it to black and white, and that's quite useful, especially on a design wall where things are staying put for a bit. I like the fact that I can work with the Ruby Ruler in real time and move things on the fly without having to go through the photo process again, especially as you see, this one's laid out on the floor and we have a lot of pets, so time is of the essence. Also, there's something about the red filter that's just, it's easier for me to see. But whatever you use, please take notice of how much value plays into the balance of the quilt. Once you see it, you can manipulate it to your advantage. For instance, maybe you want your quilt to range from very light value to very dark to create a landscape effect or an ombre or a gradient. And these are places where value may play more role than color, but both are involved. Or maybe you have a fabric that isn't working and you can't figure out why. It might be a value issue rather than an offending color. In this quilt, I want sparkle and movement. We moved things around. They, they moved things around, I directed traffic, checking back with the value finder until we had what we liked, here. 
The value was mostly sorted out, but we had an overly pink situation to solve in this corner. Once we liked the arrangement of color and value, we pinned it for assembly. I pin, I have them pin, vertical rows, top to bottom, left to right, and I number my rows. This goes together very quickly for me, and I don't have to go back to the layout or design wall for placement, and it works when the blocks are all the same size aligned on a grid. If the structure of the quilt were different, the assembly might be as well, and I'd just adjust accordingly. Then I sew it together using the webbing the top method. and then I press it. If I told you I pressed all the columns before sewing the rows together, I'd be lying. <laughs> but you probably should do that. I sort of try for evenly pressed seams, but patience is not my forte, and I'm happy with close enough. You press as precisely as it pleases you. Now, if I, if I were sending this out to be quilted, I would be more attentive to the pressing. But I'm quilting it here, so uh, fluffing batting hides a multitude of sins. Since I'm not adding borders, though, they would look great. I took a victory lap, actually I haven't yet, but I will, and I'll sew about an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around. That will keep my seams from stretching too much or popping open during the quilting. And I have my patented sliding quilt system here to show my assembled quilt top. Careful. Come further in. There we go. Thank you. And I went with the layout as printed in the pattern, partly because I'm demonstrating for the quilt along, but mostly because I like the mixy, playful spirit. Thank you. Feel free to change the layout to one that suits you. It's your quilt. Make it your way with color and value placement that you love. Next week, I'll break down how I think about, plan for, and execute the actual quilting. Plus, I think I'm changing my original backing plan. So I'll go over that as well. We'll see how it turns out. If you're having fun and or learning something, please click those buttons, like, subscribe, share. Let me know in the comments how your breakdown quilt along is going. Are you quilting along? Are you watching along? Are you already finished like my friend Amy? She sent me pictures, they're fabulous. I'll show you later. Wherever you are is perfect. There is no deadline and no rush. It's quilting, it's not that serious. It should be fun. I hope you're enjoying yourself and the process and I hope you never forget that you make the world more beautiful just by being in it. I'm Amy, and I'll see you next time.